Chapter 1. It all starts with God. Uh, and then we're given a couple of... Oh. Oh, this is fucking tricky and nasty and quote mining, which is actually a creationist tactic. All right, let's start. Let's see. For the opening quotations here on the page, he has first a Bible verse and then a Bertrand Russell quote. The quote... Unless you assume a god, the question of life's purpose is meaningless. And I gotta agree with Bertrand, but let me explain what he means, or what I mean when I say that there is no meaning to life is, there is no divine plan, there's no creator, there's no purpose. We're here. We happened because of evolution. We weren't, the, the earth wasn't formed for us to live on it. It's the other way around. We evolved because our ancestors lived on this earth. It's fantastic that we happen to be here. We're incredibly lucky. We should enjoy it and we can and do fill our lives with meaning through relationships, through work, through satisfaction, through personal pride, through charity. Of course we give our lives meaning, but we do that. It's not like the universe has a plan for us or anything. <laughs> That'd be incredibly conceited. Yet Rick Warren starts with, it's not about you. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment, peace of mind, or happiness. Oh, he, if you want to know why you're placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. So this isn't about your purpose. This is about God's purpose for your life. This is, this is God's purpose. So how many people, when they pick up this book, think that they're going to get a book that tells them about their purpose? I mean, that's what Rick Warren was promising in the intro. Huh. All right. So the search for purpose of life has puzzled people for thousands of years. That's because we begin at the wrong starting point ourselves. We ask self-centered questions like, what do I want to be? What are my goals, my ambitions? Yeah, because only a non-ambitious person with absolutely no goals would end up as the pastor of a mega church and a billionaire. That can't possibly happen through any ambition or goals of your own, right, Ricky? All right, I'm going to go through the rest of this chapter, and uh, if there's anything else, face palm me. I'll be sure to capture it. All right, I only made it another paragraph. Um... You didn't create yourself, so there's no way you can tell yourself what you were created for. Question begging. You're assuming that you were created for something. Why? What evidence points to that? Uh, if I handed you an invention you had never seen before, you wouldn't know its purpose, and the invention itself wouldn't be able to tell you either. Dude, if it was an AI, it totally could. Actually, lots of systems like computers do tell you what they what they are and how they work through training programs. Duh! You exist only because God wills that you exist. Well, then I suppose we don't have to worry about abortions. God didn't will for them to exist. Otherwise, they would, right, Rick? Being successful and fulfilling your life's purpose are not at all the same issue. You could reach all your personal goals, become a raving success by the world's standards, and still miss the purposes for which God created you. Well, as somebody who grew up with a lot of friends who were missionaries and things like that, people who went off and neglected their kids so they could contract malaria and die in order to serve God's purposes, I gotta say, if you reach all your own personal goals and become a raving success instead, you have dodged that bullet, my friend. The easiest way to discover the purpose of an invention is to ask the creator of it. I'm sorry, have you ever dealt with tech guys? They don't speak English. I used to work for a software company as the translator between the tech guys and the clients. Asking the guys who built it how it works will never give you an answer you can understand. <laughs> I, I just have to comment on the sheer pulling it out of his ass of it all. I mean, <laughs> He just claims things. 
He doesn't actually provide scriptural backing for them. He doesn't provide evidence uh, that, you know, a secularist would consider sufficient. He just claims things. He just says things are true and expects you to just swallow it. Maybe because he's a pastor and that usually works with sheep. I don't know, but <laughs> God was thinking of you long before you ever thought about him. His purpose for your life predates your conception. Again, making me wonder about anti-abortion things. He planned it before you existed without your input. You may choose your career, your spouse, your hobbies, and other parts of your life, but you don't get to choose your purpose. Can I choose to skip my purpose though? Because really, if it's not about me, if my purpose is about God, I don't actually yet have any motivation to want that purpose. Rick, that's the big failing. You haven't actually made me want to take this harder, narrower path, you know, of righteous self-conceitedness. I don't know. There's nothing appealing about it to me. All right, so far, uh, so group, my, 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 my book study group, please. For day one, the point to ponder is, it's not about me. Oh, fuck that. The verse to remember. Everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Colossians 1.16b, the message version. Question to consider. In spite of all the advertising around me, how can I remind myself that life is really about living for God, not myself? Wow, myself has nothing to do with advertising. I actually only see ads online and a very limited number at that. Thank you, ad blocker. <laughs> um, wait, so I'm something about ad, despite advertising, life isn't about me. I guess I'm supposed to link myself with consumerism. Um, I didn't fall down that particular cultural trap. I was too poor. <laughs> I've been poor all my life. I'm a thrifty motherfucker. It's the way I go. That's how I roll. <laughs> All right, um, so it's not about me. So day one is beating you down, telling you it's not about you, you selfish person who wants your own life to be about you. You're trying to find your own purpose. No, 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 no. You are only here for one reason only, and that is to do what God wants and be obedient. Yes, because Christianity is not a religion of morality. It's a religion of obedience, nothing more. Apparently, I have the conclusion, I'm guessing, guessing that at the end of 40 days, the conclusion is gonna be that my purpose in life is to do whatever the fuck God wants. I don't think so. Everybody on YouTube have great godless days that are all about you. Peace.